experience within the halls of academia as well as in the non-academic community. His town, gown, background can only enrich the experiences of our students as well as his faculty colleagues, many of whom are also engaged in novel transfer to the community as well as from the community to the university through our centers of research and outreach. We are particularly fortunate to have Dr. Brown as the director of the Black Male Initiative Program, which is one of the university's major programs designed to assist in reversing the devastating trend which, if continued, will destroy a generation of African American youth. Therefore, it is fitting that he is our speaker because much of his professional life has been devoted to the resolution of conflict, some of which resides in hunger and poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Lee Brown to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Jones, to the Reverend Clergy and President Harris and Drain and other members of the head table. Leland Center staff and ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by expressing my sincere appreciation to the Leland Center on World Hunger and Peace for extending to me the very kind invitation to be your speaker here this evening. As uh, many of you know, I recently returned to Houston and to Texas Southern University after two years and eight months in New York City, where I had the pleasure of serving as deputy. 36th Police Commissioner, saying that we'd be quick to say that it's good to be home. <laughs> and I say that advisedly because serving as Police Commissioner of New York City was indeed a unique experience. For example, I was responsible for managing the largest police agency in America, an agency with over 35,000 employees. In fact, there are some who describe that department as the nation's second largest standing army. The budget for the New York City Police Department was $2.7 billion, as larger than the budget for the city of Houston. We had to police a population of some 8 million people who reside in an area of some 300 square miles. Oh. If you compare New York with Houston, you can see some very clear differences. For example, Houston has a population of about 1.7 million people who reside in an area that covers some 600 square miles. But New York has a very diverse population with over 170 different ethnic groups living, living in that city's five boroughs. The nature of New York City is such that the experience you get there in one year could not be obtained in any other city in 20 years. <laughs> you can just consider, for example, the majority of fact during my relatively short tenure there, I was responsible for handling a single act of homicide that took 87 lives, two airplane crashes, two subway train crashes, two riots, over 2,200 homicides in one year, Nelson Mandela's first stop on his visit to America, a visit of 71 heads of state in one city at one time, two ticker tape parades, one from Mandela and the other for those who participated in the Gulf War. As a result, I had the opportunity to meet many heads of state ambassadors and modern day history makers, such as General Colin Powell, Nelson Mandela, President Bush, President Elect Clinton, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Clyde Lee, with many others <laughs> that you only read about in newspapers or see on television. Yes, I reflected on the people I've met over the years. I could not help but think back to the year 1982, when it was announced that I was appointed to the position of Chief of Police of Houston, Texas. I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at the time, and I recall very vividly receiving a telephone call from an African-American congressman from Texas by the name of Mickey Leland. He called, not knowing me, but to offer his support I took over the difficult task of police chief for this city. In fact, he was assigned Rodney Ellis to keep in touch with me to make sure that he was able to provide 
any assistance I might need. I also recall the Saturday afternoon one week before Mickey's untimely death. The two of us spent the afternoon at a Chinese restaurant talking about the politics of the city. He was trying to convince me to run for mayor. There were many other times in between the first phone call and the Chinese lunch. Mickey and I got together was in Houston and Washington, D.C. Mickey was not only an advisor, a confidant, but also a, a dear friend. For that reason, I'm very honored to be the speaker for the Mickey Lino Center's second annual birthday celebration. And it's indeed appropriate that we call this event a celebration because we do want to celebrate the contributions Mickey made toward addressing the problems of world hunger and peace. Because we do want to celebrate the continuation of his work. And I firmly believe that if Mickey had lived, American troops would not be in Somalia today because he would have seen the problem and had this country do something about it before thousands of people lost their lives. Because we do want to celebrate the people we honor this evening for their efforts to eradicate hunger and homelessness here in Houston. As I prepared for my presentation this evening, I could not help but look at where we have been, where we are, where we're going as a nation. And looking back, I could not help but reflect upon the many praise and the many unpraised heroes and heroines of our community who have accounted for our survival. I could not help but wonder where we would be if there were not great institutions like our churches who were the first to feed the hungry. I could not help but wonder what our destiny would have been if it had not been for people like Nat Turner or Harriet Tubman or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Mickey Leland. That reflecting on these courses it became quite clear that what we are today is a direct result of people becoming involved in the affairs of the community and providing community services. For the night, we are taking time out to say thanks to several of Houston's movers and molders of our time, at the same time, making sure we keep Mickey's dream alive. So at this point, I stand before you at this banquet to give tribute to those, those outstanding citizens of our community who have given their best. But I'm ever mindful of the fact that our community is a better place because people like the ones we honor people concerned, people who have fed the hungry, housed the homeless, and cared for the needy. And so our history tells us of a man who struggled against all odds to develop a very successful business. Yet he takes the time to chair an organization that provides food for people in Fifth Ward, Houston. Our history tells us of a woman who founded a mission whose chief goal is to provide food and shelter for senior citizens. Our history tells us of a woman who founded an organization that provides shelter and food for needy men, women, and children. Our history tells us that there are those who have distinguished themselves in the spirit of Mickey Leland and thus set examples for all of the rest of us to follow. Indeed, the recipients of the awards here tonight are living testimony of the theme of tonight's affair. Your help is their hope. They've all answered a cause, and in a very unselfish way answered Mickey's challenge. Yet much needs to be done. Consider, if you would, the following. Throughout our world, a quarter of a million young children die every week from malnutrition, disease, and poverty. Over 40,000 children worldwide die each day from hunger-related causes. That number is equal to 100 jumbo jets, each loaded with 400 children, leaving and, and crashing down to the earth, one every 14 minutes, and leaving no survivors. Looking at the present trend, some 100, 100, 130 million children will die of disease and malnutrition during the decade of the 1990s. But the problem is not isolated to undeveloped nations. Consider, if you would, 
in the state of Texas, 24% of our children were poor at the end of 1990. This placed Texas eighth of all states in child poverty. One out of, one out of every three Houston children live below the federal poverty level. African Americans and Hispanic children are far more likely than white children to be poor in the Houston area. In the greater Houston area, one of five people live at or below the poverty income level. Fifteen percent of the Houston area elderly, those 65 and older, live at or below the poverty level. But you see, my friends, we have, I believe, a moral obligation to address not only world hunger, but also the problem of hunger here at home. Each of us has a responsibility to do our part to ensure that the future is made better for those who are less fortunate than we are. If we are to be successful locally, we can't continue to rely solely on Washington, D.C. Whether we must recognize that in today's society, our social problems must also be addressed at the local level. Each of us must ask ourselves, what do we know about the poor? What do we know about homelessness? What do we know about poverty? What do we know about hunger? But most important, what do we do about these people problems? First of all, let me suggest that all too many Americans, Texans and Houstonians, do not have the benefit that those of us here enjoy tonight. They do not have a decent house to live in. They do not have a job nor the prospect for meaningful employment. They do not have adequate health care. They have not received a quality education. They do not live in safe neighborhoods. They do not feel that the police are there to help them. They do not have the ability to make decisions that will make a difference in their lives. Sadly, they do not have hope. Yet hopelessness is not limited to the people I've just described. I find also a high level of hopelessness among people such as myself, such as you. People who enjoy the benefits of our society. It's a hopelessness a feeling that nothing can make a difference. But I don't believe the situation is hopeless. I believe there is a reason for hope. But for hope to be realized, we must understand that many, if not all of the conditions of the 1970s, the 1980s, still exist in the 1990s. And some have gotten worse while some new problems have emerged. Today, as we look at our society, we see that the quest for civil rights is still characterized by the quest of the poor for a role in the decisions that affect them. It's characterized by the quest of the young, the quest of the elderly, women and minority groups, for a role in the decision-making process that affects them. In essence, the new dilemma is a confrontation between those forces which would compel society to change and those forces that seek to maintain the status quo. Our struggle is still to demand a transformation of political thought and campaign promises into social, economic, and political action. And no one of us can afford not to be involved. We cannot afford to sit in the audience, always dependent upon activists in our community such as those we're being, that are being honored here tonight. I am convinced that with the sense of a commitment to our community, involvement in the problems of our community, we can destroy the inequities that exist within our community. But we must address the issues in a way different from what we've done in the past. That means we must use our institutions, our government, our organizations to bring people together around a common goal. That means we must develop here in Houston, Texas, a plan for our people that is no less sophisticated than the plans we develop for streets and highways, or land use, 
our sewage control, or any other aspect of our physical environment. That means we must set realistic goals to reduce poverty, homelessness, and hunger here in Houston. That means we must have a new type of leadership that brings together all of the people in order to make a difference. That means we must join forces to support our organizations and crusaders such as those whom we honor tonight because they know and understand that in order to save our city and this nation, we must aggressively address those issues that have direct and immediate impact upon the lives of people. It's not enough to know what has been done. It's not enough to know what is being done. We must learn about what ought to be done and then do something about it. In that regard, our goal for this nation must be about full employment, a policy that guarantees a job for every American willing, able, and seeking work. Our goal for education must be for quality and meaningful education for all children, children who too often leave our schools undereducated, unprepared, and unskilled. Our goal for higher education should be supporting of our historical black colleges and universities, be the support, preserve, and advance our institutions of higher learning. The significance of this, this concern can readily be seen if we ask where would we be in respect to African American lawyers and medical doctors if there had been no Howard, Meharry, or Texas Southern Universities. Our goal should be home ownership, which makes it possible for those in the lower economic strata of our society to obtain safe, decent, and sanitary housing. Our goal should also reflect a commitment to economic development, adequate health care, and a strong determination to control crime in our community. There must also be a, a, a careful examination our, of our family as an institution and its preservation. We must take a close look at our youth and develop programs that teach them the work ethic and respect for one another. Most of all, we must collectively redirect ourselves to demand that the nation ensure through public policy that there is equal opportunity for all Americans. But there is even more we can do as individuals. There are things we can do without additional resources. Here at Texas Southern University, we have the Black Male Initiative Program. This is a program designed to recruit African-American males <coughs> to the university and get them out with degrees. And this would greatly enhance their chance of becoming productive citizens of our society. You can support this program by volunteering to serve as mentors. If you own a business, you can adopt a school that assists at-risk children in getting an education. If you represent a church, you can provide programs to take just one block next to your house of worship and address the problems there. It might, might mean merely fixing up the, the dilapidated house in your neighborhood. If you're an individual, you can serve as a mentor, work with the dropout, help just one child, become a tutor, serve as a counselor, or just be a friend to someone who needs support. Teach a pregnant teenager how to be a parent, see that she gets adequate prenatal care. It's important that we reflect that where we are today has been the result of courageous people, such as those whom we're honoring here tonight, doing what needed to be done, when it needed to be done, and in doing so have helped somebody along the way. From their dedication, devotion, and guidance, we can move forward in our struggle for a better and more just society. It's in that context that I am reminded of the words of that old church song that says, if we can help somebody as we pass along, if we can cheer somebody with a song, if we can show somebody he's traveling wrong, that our living will not be in vain. We can do our duty as a Christian op. We can bring salvation to a world once wrong. We can spread the message as the master taught that our living will not be in vain. So as we leave here tonight, let us not forget that your help is their hope.
Let's join forces tonight and commit ourselves to making this a better community. In close, let me say that I'm indeed honored to have been able to participate in a tribute to Houston's own, those persons whose living has not been in vain. Thank you. I, I get a great privilege of speaking uh, of our speaker as Professor Brown because uh, uh, when I was being talking, when I was talking to the Regents about coming to the university, uh, Chief Brown was one of the people advising the Regents as to whether or not they ought to have me. Uh, I think in some ways I've been paying it back. <laughs> but uh, to me, it is indeed a great privilege to have you with us this evening and uh, indeed to have you back at the university. Now, we have the privilege of hearing about the greatest love of all from Ms. Brenda Watson. Children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be everybody searching for a hero people need someone to look up to i never found anyone to fulfill that need a lonely place to be so i learn to depend
gentlemen, that song was by Mrs. Uh, Ms. Beverly Wimberly. And I also need to point out that she, uh, Brenda Wimberly, I'm a mess this up for real, Brenda Wimberly. And she was accompanied uh, on piano by Miss Stephanie Scott. Thank you both. <laughs> now, I wish to present to you for remarks, Alice Raines. think we can go home after that beautiful number. <laughs> Dr. Harris, Leland Center team, platform guests, and friends. It is heartwarming to see so many friends out tonight to celebrate Mickey's birthday and to honor such distinguished community persons. I am very happy to be here among you on this wonderful occasion. The Mickey Leland Center is a historical center for all of us. As Martin Luther King and others have said, I have a dream. I think we all have a dream. I also have a dream that this center will become a world center of hunger and peace, where all people of different backgrounds can come together to solve problems. This can certainly be a way of bringing our community closer together and establishing a link between all segments of the city. Let us continue to be a catalyst for Mickey's efforts in continuing the fight for malnutrition across the country as well as the world. Let's take up his torch and carry forth the work that he has thus far so nobly advanced, specifically his hope, vision, and actions to end world hunger. Let us go on to the greatest heights in service to humankind, the spirit in his honor. As a parting word, I feel that it would be appropriate at this time to share with you a reading that I found in uh, The Author is Unknown, but I always read this at least once a week. You wished no one a last farewell, even said goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. To some, you are not forgotten to others, part of the past. But to us who loved and lost you, your memory will always last. A million times we've missed you, a million times we've cried. If our love could have saved you, you never would have died. Deep in our hearts, you will always stay loved and remembered every day. I hope this evening has motivated and inspired you to join hands with the Mickey Leland Center to lend your support in linking all segments of the Houston community together. Thank you for caring and sharing. the lifetime of service of six individuals. Those who have been selected to receive the Mickey Leland Center's Distinguished Service Awards 
and those who have been selected to receive a special recognition award. These awards go to people who have dedicated their lives to helping others, vignettes of which you will hear as we present the awards to the recipients this evening. We have solicited nominations from around the city, the greater Houston area, and we have assembled a committee of five people unknown to us, not unknown to everybody, but unknown as far as making sure they didn't have anything to do with it, so that they could select this on the high, at the highest possible level of credibility. This evening we're here to validate that they have done just that. Before we bring the people uh, forward, I'd like to do two things. One is that we need to recognize that this university uh, sets in the con congressional district of city council member, not congressional district, the city council district, not yet Garnett, of uh, city council member Garnett Coleman. Uh, council. No, no. They, they told me I'm supposed to write stuff down. But, and I, I know you went farther than that, too. Ladies and gentlemen, recognize the, the presence of State Representative Garnet Coleman. And this, I think, is for all of you. Dear friends, it seems especially fitting that you have chosen to honor men and women of goodwill in this season of goodwill. It is difficult, however, for most of us to keep our thoughts on home and family and holiday greetings when our hearts are with the starving children of Somalia and the empty-eyed children in the shelters of America. Those you honor today with the Mickey Leland Center Distinguished Service Award, C.G. Hardy, Isha Salas, and Rosemary R. Badami have, have earned your highest praise and our deep, its deepest gratitude. We extend our thanks as well to those you honor with special recognition awards, Susan R. Levy, Malcolm T. McLemore, and Ranveer Biki Mohindra. We are so grateful to you for all the work that you have done and for the work you continue to do. Your research, your efforts to resolve conflict, and your determination to end hunger by eliminating the causes of hunger are a source of inspiration and a wellspring of knowledge. Please ex extend my heartiest congratulations and my warmest wishes to your honorees. Their work, as well as yours, sets an example for us all. Sincerely, Bill Clinton. Will the honoree Rose Mary R. Adami come forward, please? Rosemary R. Badani. Since you founded and directed the Magnificat House and have done so for 25 years, and because the Magnificat House, which was founded in 1968, was joined in 1972 by your effort to found something called the Loaves and Fishes Soup Kitchen, and because through this work in each of these houses there is space for 150 people Three meals a day are served, 365 days a week, and your work has led to serving more than 109,000 meals. For all of this and more, we proudly present to you this evening the Distinguished Service Award of the Mickey Leland Center on World Hunger and Peace. We congratulate you. We wish you well. I just want to thank the Mickey Lady Center for this prestigious award in recognizing the work of the Magnificat Houses. It's an honorable award because of the one we honor, Mickey Leland, 
And you know, Mickey Lenin was one of the first to challenge the world's conscience on hunger. I was thinking today about the passage in the Bible that says there's one who plants the seed, there's one who waters, and the one, there's one who reaps the harvest. And I think Mickey Leland, by his martyr's death, planted the seed. And the relief workers, and maybe the workers here in this country, we water the soil. And God willing that Operation Rescue Hope will maybe begin the harvest. But we always got to remember the one who planted this, the seed, Mickey Leland. And I'm so honored to have this award. Thank you. Councilmember Lee. <laughs> you stay here. Come on, stay here. Oh, no, there's something more, please. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not sure what the president's admonitions are, but I do know that uh, we have come for a very humbling time. And briefly, I'll say on behalf of the mayor and city council, uh, we acknowledge the fact to know Alice Raines is to love her. But we also acknowledge the fact that Mickey Leland and this great historic institution and this center represent for the city of Houston jewels yet untapped. And the legacy that he has left for us is the continuing challenge that we should never say no. And so on behalf of the city of Houston, let me say to you that we are proud to congratulate you as well for the outstanding service that you have been able to harvest as you have worked the seed that has been planted by Mickey Leland. Thank you. Senator Rodney Ellis. Rosa, if I, if I might, uh, before I give it to you, make a few brief comments, and I promise I won't do it for each of the distinguished honorees, but I'm very proud of all of you. Uh, I'm very proud of the Mickey Leland Center, and President Harris, very proud of you and Dottie Atkins uh, and Donald Hill for uh, deciding to have this second annual event. Uh, I was in Austin today, and to be honest with you, I've got to go back in the morning, and I was inclined to uh, ask Alice Raines or, or uh, Gaston to do this for me tonight, and I called Alice Raines, and I could hear that little quiver in her voice uh, that, that sort of reminded me that I shouldn't forget all of the contributions that Mickey Leland made to me. Uh, but it's important that you do this kind of an event, uh, this kind of a United Nations event, because that's what this is tonight. As I walked in the room, it sort of struck me when I saw people uh, who speak different languages, uh, who have different dialects, who are diff different colors, all genders. It, it is truly a microcosm of what Mickey Leland stood for. Uh, sometimes I wonder why we go through this exercise of making people uh, even bigger uh, than life, uh, naming buildings and doing things after people. Uh, and it dawned on me uh, the last time that I flew into the Mickey Leland International Terminal, for those of you who thought it was IAB, it is the Mickey Leland International Terminal. Uh, we do that not so much because we knew the person or we liked them, uh, but we do it because we share the vision. We believe in what someone stood for. And I dare say any of you watching the news accounts of the last couple of weeks uh, could watch those starving children on the television and not think of Mickey Leland and what he stood for. Uh, this is the second annual event. Uh, I predict President Harris, it will grow bigger and bigger every year. Uh, last year, since I was uh, uh, out of the country, I believe, I, I was not here, and I don't know if you gave out awards. Is this the first or second time? The, the first award, it's a historic beginning. Uh, and each of you honorees who are getting these awards tonight, uh, you've got your very closest friends here, but I want you to know that every year it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So your awards ought to be particularly special because they are the first of many. Uh, the governor could not be here tonight. She's trying to uh, make some decisions on who may be uh, trying to follow in Mickey Leland's footsteps and maybe go to the United States Senate soon. And, and, Dottie, I was wondering whether or not you had the proclamation here. So before I left, I asked the governor, I said, do, you know, is there a proclamation or something? I'm going to this deal. She said, I don't know, but I know I signed them. Uh, so if, if they don't have them there, it looks like you don't know what's going on in your Senate district. So thank you for having this letter. Uh, Rose, I'm just going to read the first one. I won't read the others, but they all have the same thing on them. It is my pleasure to congratulate you on being named a recipient of the Mickey Leland Center Distinguished Service Award. You've been chosen for this distinction because of your outstanding efforts to alleviate hunger in the world. 
Mickey Leland inspired us all by dedicating his life to ending hunger, and it is fitting that this award, named in his honor, should go to someone as deserving as you. All my best wishes and keep up the good work. Sincerely, Ann Richards, Governor of the State of Texas. I'd like for the magnificent crew to stand up and in particular to recognize Frank Ross who is a manager of our soup kitchen who works so hard in feeding thousands of people. Would the rest of you stand up? Would the rest of you stand up? We're so proud to be here tonight. Thank you. Man, the president, he's so much taller than I I have to pull the microphone down so that they can speak into it. Will the recipient, C.G. Hardy, come forward, please? All right. C.G. Hardy, because you founded and now serve as chairman of the Target Hunger Advisory Committee and have done so for three years. And because this community initiative of the United Way of the Texas Gulf Coast is composed of 13 food pantries which have generated more than three million pounds of food for needy people in Houston. And because you lead these volunteers in serving food to more than 10,000 people annually. And because you are known by those who know you, by the phrase, now call me anytime, day or night, when you need anything, end of quote. For all this and more, we proudly bestow upon you the Distinguished Service Award of the Mickey Leland Center on World Hunger and Peace. people who are responsible for me to receive this award tonight. Uh, I don't, I'm a man of very few words and all of the people who know me can attest to that fact. My motto is you would be surprised how much can be done if you don't care who gets the credit. And that's what I was taught as a boy. And in the church that I attend, we have a motto that says, God our Father, Christ our Redeemer, and man our brother. Thank you. Will the recipient, Isha Salas, come forward, please? Isha Salas, of those of us who have made efforts to contribute, we have given that which we could afford to without due. But to Isha Salas, because you sold your home and used your life savings to establish a home for others, and because this home serves not only as a place for providing shelter, but also contributes to education, to good health and providing benefits to people who deserve it. And because of your efforts, you have contributed it to 12 different missions around the greater Houston area and even give of your time to supervise a huge garden that feeds the people who come to your shelter and to others. For all this and more, we proudly bestow upon you the Distinguished Service Award of the Mickey Leland Center on world hunger and peace. Congratulations. You know, when I came here tonight, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you. And the meaning of awards is really 
is very encouraging because it says whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. right. And when I first started, people said, you're crazy. Well, like Mickey, Mickey Leland, one man who's moving and, do, and who did a lot, so have I followed in his footsteps in doing. So don't you ever think for a day that one person does, does not make a difference. You can make the change in the world. There are two people here tonight who is very special, special to me, my parents. Stand up. You know, when you give your children values, you give them dignity and life. This is what my parents have done to me. Thank you. Thank you. I've never come away with this many awards at one place before. <laughs> When we received uh, nominations this year, we found ourselves with the great fortune of having been, uh, having revealed to us so many wonderful people and ideas and things that we could not stop with just the three that we had determined would be the Distinguished Service Awards. And so we have developed another category. Tonight, we also recognize three individuals who received special recognitions, recognition awards. I invite Provost Bobby Wilson and Assistant Director of the Center, Dottie Atkins, to present these awards. I would like to begin by congratulating and, and also recognizing the fact that there was perfect timing on this particular program, sandwiched between Thanksgiving and Christmas, the time of the year when we are overeating ourselves. It's perfect timing on, with reference to what the televisions are focusing on. So Donnie, uh, Dottie and, and Don, you have done well in your timing. As we turn to our special awards, recognize those who will be receiving these awards. I'm reminded of the sons of Zebedee when they were made a special request to the master for one to sit on the right side and one to sit on the left side. The positions of honor and recognition. Of course, the re reply was that you who really want to be great must be your servants. And who want to be the chief, or who would really be chief, must be the servant of all. These persons we recognize tonight, they are our servants. They have put food on people, tables, and in people's hands. They'll put clothing on people's backs. They'll basically clothed naked. They provided homes for the homeless. And it gives me a great honor to be a part of this, to be a part of the Mickey Leland Center, to have an opportunity to recognize a man who stood for just what we represent. But it also gives me a great honor to know that we had the good sense to see the vision, to catch hold to it, and to make this night a reality. At this time, I ask Ms. Dottie Atkins that you will come and join me. Our first recipient in this category is presently serving as president of the Service of the Emergency Aid Resource Center for the Homeless, better known as SEARCH. She has worked with this project for approximately seven years. She and other volunteers from the Temple Emmanuel formed a task force to begin search. 
because they felt that there was a need for immediate provisions of relief to the homeless and to the poor of the Houston population. Levy has been very active in search. She has been secretary of the board of directors, vice president, and now she's serving as president. The services offered through search have expanded greatly under her leadership. Search now has a resource center, a child care program, and a van outreach program. So you can see from initially starting as a project for the homeless, there are many other services that have developed under her leadership. It is certainly my pleasure to have join us the recipient of the Special Recognition Award, Susan Levy. Will you please join us at the podium? On behalf of the Mickey Leland Center, I'm very happy to present to you the special award. Thank you. Hello there. Hi there. I want to thank you very much. As an individual, I am deeply honored to receive this award and this honor, named after one of the great humanitarians of our time. I'm also extremely proud to receive this honor representing SEARCH. It has been my privilege to help this organization come from vision to reality and subsequently to grow from one program to its current five. And all the while working with an incredible group of dedicated and caring people. Uh, the list uh, of those people is quite long and I'm sure that at this point you'd much rather that I not even start naming them, but I want to thank each and every one of them. It has been said that Mickey Leland, of Mickey Leland, that his mission was humanity, not ideology. I believe that Search's commitment to seeking creative yet realistic solutions in response to the widely varying needs of the homeless is very much in line with the late Congressman's desire to focus on providing true aid to individuals. Today is in Mickey Leland's day there is much work in this world to be done from the streets of Baidoa to the streets of Houston. I have been able to focus my efforts on the streets of Houston. I am extremely saddened when I see the extent of the problems that are there. I am encouraged by the response of Houstonians and so much support. And I'm indeed grateful for this honor and this award in hopes that recognition like this may inspire someone else to become active in helping the most des desperately poor among us. Indeed, your help is their hope, but I'm also convinced that their hope is our hope, our hope for a better world and our hope for a better future. Again, I thank you very much. This is an honor I will treasure forever. Since I did not read the language of the presentation from the city, I want to read it at this time as was presented to all, to Susan R. Levy in recognition of community service rendered to alleviate hunger and homelessness in Houston, um, and listed then Texas Southern University, the 15th day of December, and signed by Bob Lanier. I took this special privilege because I do want to also thank uh, Search uh, because of the special efforts that have been made right at this time as we sit today trying to face the problem of homelessness what better place to be able to acknowledge all of your help than to acknowledge it tonight. Thank you again. Our next honoree is presently serving as the coordinator of the Fourth Ward Community Garden and Vice President of Fourth Ward Food Pantry. The purpose of both of the organizations is to provide food for the needy, particularly women and children and the elderly. 
The garden distributes 10,000 servings of vegetables yearly and throughout the year. The pantry has provided food for over a quarter of a million meals. The work that this honoree is doing really got started when he didn't have too much assistance with anything. He has indicated that he didn't know himself how to handle a garden, and he had very little help at the time in trying to get this program started. He has succeeded, and today he works with the Hunger Coalition Community Garden, which is providing food for many people who are needed. It is my pleasure again to have Mr. McLemore to join us at the podium, please. While he is approaching us, I would like to say this is a very beautiful plaque. And it reads, in recognition of exemplary ser community service to alleviate hunger in 1992, Mika Leland Center on World Hunger and Peace, Texas Southern University, Houston, Texas. just want to say a few words. I don't want to stay too long. I don't want to wear my welcome out. Um, but I'd just like to say a few words. The first thing I would like to, for Dr. Bob Brown to stand, please, if you will. <clears throat> Dr. Bob Brown. <laughs> Dr. Bob Brown is uh, one of the reasons that uh, we have been so successful with the garden. Uh, he taught me mostly everything I knew about garden. Uh, you'd be surprised to know how much food you can serve uh, fresh vegetables to people, you know. Uh, I saw a long time ago, after I retired from the post office, that uh, I wasn't doing anything, so uh, I happened to go by the food pantry and it, I caught my eye right there, a lot of people standing in line waiting for food, you know. I said, well, it's time for me to try do something, uh, put my time to use. And uh, I, I, I started working with the pantry, and from the pantry to the garden. And from the garden, to, I worked a little while with search. I see a few of my co-workers over there now. So. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time. However, I like to say that uh, my co-workers, uh, 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 I want to say that uh, this is theirs too, as well as mine. I couldn't do it alone because you'd be surprised and know how much work it was that we was put into this uh, project. Yes. So I think that's about all. Thank you. that we find persons who are gainfully employed who will take the time to use the expertise that they have and to share that expertise with an organization that is devoted to helping to feed those who are, who are in need. Our next honoree is Vice President of Technical Services for Riviana Foods and a member of the Food Bank's Board of Directors. In 1989, he coordinated a tennis tournament sponsored by the Houston Indian community to benefit the food bank. Since then, our honoree has served on the food bank's board of directors, and for three years he has worked cooperatively through Riviana to implement innovative programs. And these are some of the things that have uh, taken place since he has 
brought to this organization the expertise of his company. Uh, they worked very diligently uh, to, e to renovate the food bank's warehouse, which increased the food bank's storage and food handling capabilities by 110%. In addition, his work has been instrumental in making the Houston Food Bank the third largest food bank in the United States. As a food bank board member, our nominee has served as chairman of the Efficiency Committee, chairman of the Finance Committee, and as treasurer. Under his guidance, over the past three years, Riviana has become one of the food bank's top donors. They have donated 300,000 pounds of rice products to the needy in Houston and 25 surrounding counties. In honor of this service to the needy people in our community, they have been able, they have been the recipient of the Houston Food Bank's Partnership Award. It is my pleasure to call for this award, Mr. Ravi Bikini Mohendra. It gives me great pleasure to present to you this plaque in recognition, special recognition for your outstanding community service from the Mickey Leland Center. Thank you. Thank you. I feel very humble tonight. Um, I'd like to share with you a secret that is not widely known, and that is that Mickey Leland was a very close friend of the Indian Houston community, and he came down to many of our functions in the mid-1980s, and he talked about the plight in Houston. That was a time, if you all recall, that the, the oil prices had gone downward, and there was a lot of, uh, uh, mis the misery index was very high at that time. And he challenged us. What he said to us was that as immigrants, this is your new home. Don't stay apart from it. Integrate and do your fair share. And he talked about many causes and many needs in the community. The one that was closest to us was the need for hunger. And there were two reasons for this. All of you have seen what's happening in Somalia today. That is more or less what happened in India in the 50s and 60s. And at that time, the United States came to our help, just like they're doing today for Somalia. And a lot of us growing up in India were very much in awe of the United States. We always felt that this was a very powerful, wealthy, and generous nation to go halfway around the world to do all these wonderful things. And so our biggest aspiration was to come to this country. And it really surprised us to find that there was so much hunger right around us in this country. Secondly, having grown up with hunger all around us, we learned one thing. This was taught to us by our parents. It said, nothing great is accomplished on a hungry stomach. And if we expect our children to, great, to do great things for us tomorrow, it is our burden as parents today to make sure that none of them go hungry to bed tonight. And that is a very strong driving force for us to prevent hunger all, in all places in the world particularly in our new home, which is Houston. So this was one of the challenges that we got, and we felt, how, what is the best contribution we can make to deal with this challenge? So we met and decided our strategies, and the tennis tournament was perhaps the first part of this. But then we discovered the Houston Food Bank, and that was really a major joy to us. We found out that for every dollar that people donate to the food bank, the food bank is able to distribute $25 worth of food. And that's, that's a remarkable accomplishment. Secondly, last year, the food bank donated over 19 million pounds of food in the Houston area through 435 churches, soup kitchens, and other various charitable agencies. And what was most wonderful about this was that this is a private institution where People of all different colors, white, black, and brown, work together from private resources to try to do this good. 
and we feel very privileged to have become a part of this great institution. And I would like for people here tonight to, to learn more about it because we are not an institution apart. We are really an institution that provides food to a lot of the soup kitchens that were honored here tonight. And those that are, have not become part of this, we would very much like for you to become part of this. So I feel that in honoring me tonight, you have really honored two great and separate institutions. One is the food bank, and I think all of us on behalf of the food bank feel very privileged for this. And the second is the Indian community in Houston. And we have a lot of the founding members of our effort here tonight. And uh, would you please stand up? Please give them a hand. To, to prove the racial makeup of the Houston Food Bank, would the members of the Food Bank Board present here tonight stand up? David, David you, have, you, have, you have the white, black, and the brown. <laughs> In closing, I would like to just say this much, that we, the members of the Asian Indian community, have decided to accept Mickey Leland's challenge that he gave us. We have decided to become involved. We heard a lot of things about the children. We heard a lot of things about uh, programs that Dr. Commissioner Professor Brown talked about earlier tonight, and I think we would like to be part of that. So as long as there are any hungry people in Houston and around us, we are committed to working with you in these programs, and we hope you'll make us part of that. Thank you very much. attention to the back pages of the booklet that you use for your program and remind you that the motto is your your help is their hope and on those pages are ways by which you can personally be involved with international and local activities to help resolve matters of hunger peace and now to pronounce the benediction I invite the right Reverend Curtis Gilroy. An event like this cannot be achieved. You have seen the director, Donald Hill, and you have seen the associate director uh, taking part in the program. But I cannot let us close without having the staff of the Leland Center to stand because without their help, we would not have been able to do any of this. So will you please stand and let everyone see you. We are very proud of all of the work that you have done. Please stand. Don't be modest. Please stand. You have heard the names. You have been the names. Sharon Harrison, Benita, and Bridget Godfrey is, is in the door at the back. Those persons have worked very diligently for us to put this program on, and we are very, very proud to have you. Thank you so much. God, our Father, out of love and compassion, you have made us in your own image and likeness. You have placed in each one of us an element of yourself. It is this element that binds us to you and to each other. It is in this sense that we can speak of a common humanity. St. Paul reflected that, one, that when one member of the human family suffers, we all suffer. And when one rejoices, we all rejoice. Father, lately we have seen on television in our living rooms 
the plight of the Somalian people. We cringe, we cry, we get angry, and we feel guilty when we see the bones of children protruding because they are hungry. Move us, Father, like you move Mickey Leland and the honorees tonight to respond to those who are hungry and homeless by sharing the abundance we have and by working to eradicate hunger and homelessness. We ask you to guide the Mickey Leland Center for, Hung for World Hunger and Peace in its research to end hunger. Steer and move our hearts to be advocates for the hungry and homeless by speaking to our government officials and representatives, by being generous with our own resources. The Good Samaritan was moved to respond to the man who fell in the hands of robbers because he saw his own humanity in the person suffering. We pray then, Father, that hunger and homelessness will be eradicated so that, so that all of humanity will develop to its full potential. Bless us and watch over us. Keep us ever close to you, but most of all, give us